Hey there, it's Dr. Peebler again for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, it seemed fitting to talk about HIF-1. I have been toying around when we are going to talk about this. It is a very important factor, and it's kind of one of those chicken and the egg situations. The last episode, we obviously talked about lactate in the tumor microenvironment, and we're going to talk about today HIF-1 and how it relates to that process, but also how it is driven by that process, but also how it drives the process. So I think the best place to start is to talk about the normal function of HIF-1. And HIF stands for hypoxia inducible factor one. And there are actually three known proteins in eukaryotic physiology, HIF-1, 2, and 3. However, the majority of the literature talks mostly about HIF-1, although we'll see HIF-2 pop up in some of the graphics that we show later on. So in order to meet the high energy demand, a metabolic reprogramming occurs in cancer cells. Its role is crucial in promoting tumor survival. Among the substrates in demand, oxygen is fundamental for bioenergetics. Nevertheless, tumor microenvironment is frequently characterized by low oxygen conditions, hypoxia. Hypoxia inducible factor one is a pivotal modulator of the metabolic reprogramming which takes place in hypoxic cancer cells. In the hub of cellular bioenergetics, mitochondria are key players in regulating cellular energy. Therefore, a close crosstalk between mitochondria and HIF-1 underlies the metabolic and functional changes in cancer cells. Noteworthy, HIF-1 represents a promising target for novel cancer therapeutics. In this review, we summarize the molecular mechanisms underlying the interplay between HIF-1 and energetic metabolism with a focus on mitochondria of hypoxic cancer cells. So on this graphic on the left, we see that there is high oxygen and low oxygen. And this would be considered normoxia and low oxygen be considered hypoxia. So under normal conditions, we have a protein called HIF-1-alpha or HIF-2-alpha or HIF-3-alpha. But in this case, we're going to be talking about HIF-1-alpha but it does relate in general to the other hypoxia inducible factors. So hypoxia inducible factor one alpha is continuously made and broken down. So what happens is two additional enzymes are responsible for regulating its destruction, PHD and FIH. And needless to say, when those enzymes are activating HIF-1 alpha, HIF-1 alpha will go towards proteasomal degradation and it'll be destroyed. So it's not able to be active because it's not necessary. We have normoxia, we have good oxygen, et cetera. However, when there's hypoxia, or as we'll talk about later, pseudohypoxia, these enzymes are not functional and they end up stabilizing HIF-1 instead of destabilizing it for, de for destruction, which then translocates to the nucleus to upregulate itself and other important factors for the metabolic reprogramming towards the Warburg effect. So this is just a little bit more detail on those things. I'm going to read the highlighted portions. So for glucose metabolism, cancer cells use more glucose than normal cells. We know that. And hypoxia, low oxygen, different genes involved in glycolysis are under HIF-1 control, such as glucose transporters, GLUT1 and GLUT3, glycolytic enzymes, hexokinase 1, 2, enolase 1, phosphoglycerate kinase 1, pyruvate kinase M2, and LDH lactate dehydrogenase. Under normal oxygen situations, normoxia, pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex for entry into the TCA cycle. That's normal physiology. However, in hypoxia, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex or pyruvate dehydrogenase is inactivated by phosphorylation by pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase 1 induced by HIF-1 giving rise to a reduced delivery of NADH and FADH2, aka it's shutting down the electron transport chain because you're starving it of its substrates that are made during the TCA cycle, and ATP production comes to a screeching halt. So what HIF-1 does is it shuts down TCA cycle, it shuts down mitochondrial function, and it upregulates glycolysis to try to stay alive. That would be if I'm drowning, if I'm in a hypoxic environment, it's actually a life-saving thing for us to have. But under normal circumstances, when we're all breathing and we're not under hypoxic conditions, this would be a pathologic process or a disease process. So 
again, induction of glycolysis together with inhibition of PDH favors production of lactate, which stabilizes HIF further. So lactate, again, is the byproduct of aerobic glycolysis or anaerobic glycolysis. Lactate actually stabilizes HIF-1. However, HIF-1 is further generating more of the Warburg effect. So it ends up being a, a vicious cycle as well. And a metabolic process very active in tumor cells characterized by a shift from oxfos to anaerobic glycolysis, aka the Warburg effect. Now, I wanted to touch also on amino acids. So a shift from oxidation to reduction carboxylation occurs in hypoxic conditions by a mechanism involving HIF-1. In hypoxic glioblastoma cells, most of the citrate comes from glutamine through reductive carboxylation. And under induction of HIF-1, an increase in the glutamine utilization in P493 cells, a model Burkitt's lymphoma, has been observed. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is not only is HIF-1 increasing glycolysis, shutting down TCA and oxidative phosphorylation, it's also upregulating glutamine. Again, remember, these are the two major fuel sources for cancer, for the Warburg effect to drive cancer further. This is just a graphic design of what we're talking about here. So we have hypoxia, and it is leading to stabilization of HIF-1. And then HIF-1 has all these downstream effects. Not only does it upregulate itself, so there's more HIF-1 around, but it also upregulates all these glucose transporters. It's going to lead to metabolic reprogramming and lactic acid formation. And it's going to shut down mitochondrial function. It's going to upregulate fatty acid synthesis, et cetera. So as you can see, HIF-1 and hypoxia are critical in this process. This is another picture of how HIF-1 and HIF-2, here, here's HIF-2. We talked about HIF-2 as being a, a factor here. HIF-1 and HIF-2 by these little lightning bolts, red and black, are upregulating glutamine. They are decreasing TCA cycle. They are upregulating lactate and glycolysis, et cetera, leading to our Warburg effect. So I hope that starts to clarify how these metabolic processes are driven and how these metabolic processes act as a snowball, autocatalytic kind of vicious cycle that has to be broken in order for us to make a dent in the cancer metabolism and growth and treatment. Until next time.